Redditors who work in the ER, what's the scariest, dumbest, or weirdest thing someone has come in for? Had a lady come in for shortness of breath, began to place an oxygen mask on her, and she yells, I'm allergic to oxygen, and pulls the mask off. I heard the doctor laugh behind the curtain. Maybe that's why she had shortness of breath? Morbidly obese guy came in for lower right quadrant pain. I lifted up his gut and found his lost wallet. Solved two problems at once. 20-year-old male came in for stomach pains, said he was hungry and hadn't eaten in two days. Maybe you should try a sandwich. I have a male cousin who landed himself in the ER because he thought that instead of a condom, he could put something tightly around his male appendage and it would force everything to stay inside. Unfortunately, getting it off posed a problem and he ultimately wound up in the ER with a zip tie around his male appendage. His nickname has been Zippy for five years now. So, did it work? My friend worked in ER. She had an obese man come in complaining of a rash under his gut. Upon close examination, they found several splinters. When asked, the man casually replied, Oh, that must have been from the love board. So the crew had to ask for details. Apparently, the couple had to use a board to pry the man's gut up to get to his business for lovemaking activities. Well, there's an image in my mind I'll never lose. A girl came in saying she was miscarrying, claimed 27 pregnancies and zero live births, says that in the last two years since she went on birth control to help regulate her periods, she's had a miscarriage every month. We had to explain to her that she was experiencing regular periods. You know, this is why you need to pay attention in health class. My aunt is a nurse and this is her story. Two extremely drunk men come in. One of them fell down the stairs and somehow got glass in his eye. They had pulled out the glass and sealed the gash in his eye with super glue. They had to soak the eye in acetone to get it open. That's terrifying. I'm an x-ray tech and the hospital I used to work at had a lot of homeless people come in. This one man came in and there was an order to x-ray both his feet. As soon as I got to the hallway with his room, there was a nasty smell. I got to his room, opened the door and almost puked. He was soaking his feet in water and it was the worst thing I have ever smelled in my life. His skin was peeling off and getting stuck to the x-ray board. I had to stop a couple times, but I kept my poker face. One case that really freaked me out was a guy that came in that was around my age, mid-twenties. He was having severe pain in his shoulder, but claimed he didn't injure it. He gets taken back and gets x-rays done and finds out his body is absolutely riddled with cancer. He was given one year to live. The family's reaction to the news was so heartbreaking to witness and something I'll never forget. A number of things come to mind, but top three without thinking. One, man with a 10 inch cucumber in his rectum. Didn't mention said cucumber until the MD noticed a bump on his stomach. Still didn't say anything until we got a CT result. Number two, older man came in with a vibrator in his rectum. Wife couldn't get it out and refused to come with him. Number three, younger male came in with priapism. Urologist was called in to drain it. One of the most bloody, horrifying things I've ever seen. I saw him again three days later for the same thing. I honestly don't know what a priapism is, and I'm not googling it. My mom used to work in an ER. When patients came in, she was the one who took their insurance, asked about their symptoms, took their vitals, and things like that. One day, she's entering paperwork for a woman whom I think came in for injuries to her hands, but I don't quite remember. Mom's taking her information, and one of the questions is the patient's occupation. The woman says, Oh, I'm a stripper. I work for Dinty Moore. Mom responds that she had no idea Dinty Moore hired strippers. The woman says, No, I'm a stripper. And just gestures emphatically in the air with her bleeding hands. Turns out she strips the meat off of cowtails. That's apparently what the meat is in Dinty Moore beef stew. Cowtail. I was shadowing in the ER once and this big white lady came in with this massive bruise around her lower stomach area. The doc asked what happened and she responded, My horse kicked me in my pooter. And I just bit my lip and turned around to force myself to not immediately bust out laughing. 
Had a car crash through our ambulance bay, action movie style. The entire car was well within the building when it finally stopped. It was a 16-year-old kid carrying his 14-year-old brother who had been shot in the abdomen over some gang stuff. Many people had just vacated that area seconds earlier because there was a CPR that came in, and they were all in the trauma room working on that. If they hadn't been, then there would have been a lot of injuries. I used to work in the accident and emergency department in our city hospital. Without a doubt, the worst thing I ever dealt with was the police and social services bringing in a two-year-old who had been immediately removed from his home after a child protection visit. The parents had stubbed out lit cigarettes on the child's eyes, on his actual eyeballs. He had the most horrific injuries, both old and new. I'll never forget prepping the child for surgery to have his eyes removed. The fact that any human could do this to another, especially a child and their own flesh and blood, is the scariest thing ever for me. Those people should be buried under the prison. Honestly, that's just awful. So we're going to take a hard 180 here and go back to something funny. Guy came in with a salt shaker lodged in his butt, said he was changing a light bulb, then somehow fell onto it. How do they always fall onto it? My sister had a patient who was interested in having her clitoris pierced but was afraid of the pain. Curious, she affixed a super strong magnet on top of and below the clitoris but couldn't remove them. By the time she got to the hospital, her tissue was essentially dead. The doctor had to scrape the magnets off as there was no other way to remove them. I'm a man and was born with all requisite parts, so you know just how serious this is when I say that story made my clitoris hurt. One time the news was playing on the TVs in the waiting rooms. The anchor mentioned a man shot in a gang-related fight who later died from his injuries. Suddenly, my parents hear screaming and crying in the other room. It was the family of the guy who got shot. They had not been informed yet. Oh, that's terrible. How is the news finding out before the parents who are in the waiting room? Come on, guys. I had a guy who put a flare gun between his legs, I guess pretending it was his thing, and fired it. Third degree burns to the groin are not fun. Probably the dumbest one I've had was a husband and wife who rode in an ambulance together, both clearly drug seeking. For whatever reason, they were placed in rooms across the hall from each other and kept yelling back and forth about what drugs they were getting. The ambulance was initially called for the wife who had fallen downstairs. No injuries visible or on x-rays. The husband rode in with them and checked in, claiming the wife had fallen into him and taken them both to the ground. The husband's only injury was where he said his feet had tangled in the steps. There was no bruising, swelling, abrasions, nothing. But he had clearly just manually pulled out five of his toenails. They were not contiguous toes and it involved both feet, just the nails. Emergency medicine is the daily interface in the process of natural selection. So it takes something truly stupid or crazy to shock me these days. Here's a couple highlights from me. Had a guy come in with a plastic hanger, the hook part, stuck in his cornhole. As it went in, it snapped and broke away from the body of the hanger. Next, the 50-year-old dude who came in with generalized abdominal pain said he had no idea what was going on. Super nice guy, talkative, very friendly. We do an abdomen acute x-ray and all you see is a massive set of batteries floating in his colon. Yep, giant dildo lodged way too far in. Off to the OR he went. Lastly, the nice couple who came in after a vigorous boning session because she broke his thing. One interventional radiology study later, where they inject dye into his urethra to test for patency, and the dye wouldn't advance, showing a stricture in the urethra. Off to the OR he went. One of the stranger complaints I've heard as a resident, I had a 19-year-old guy come into the emergency department on the night shift on 420 this year. His complaint was that he got high and he decided he should touch himself and his urethra felt harder than normal. Not his thing, his urethra. I got to the room to assess him and he was in the bathroom peeing. His poor girlfriend was sitting in the corner with her head in her hands out of embarrassment. He got back from the bathroom, stood in the doorway and said, you know, I feel better now. I think I'm just gonna go home. And then he turned around and walked out. So wait, he just had to pee? 
I used to be an EMT and one time we got called to a house in the middle of the night for a patient with belly pain. We get to his house and he's bent over a chair in extreme pain. We get him in the ambulance and start taking him to the ER. The whole drive he's letting out tiny farts that are deadly, also yelling that he just needs to fart. Can't we give him something to make him fart? The ER doc asks us if there's a possibility of a foreign body issue and I say that I didn't check. The doctor sends him to the CT scanner where he lets rip a fart that echoed. He felt better and left the ER. They had to close the scanner to air it out. You know what? I appreciate that. I wouldn't want to be the next patient walking into that place. I have two friends that are nurses in ER. Friend A said that there was a guy who went in because he had a pickle stuck in his butt. Friend B said that there was a guy who went in because he had a pickle jar up his butt. Will everyone stop putting things up their butt? I had a guy walk in completely impaled with a 4x4 wood post. He was drinking and working on his roof when he fell off. His buddy got a chainsaw, cut the bottom off the post, and somehow the impaled guy stood in the back of the pickup truck for the ride to the ER. He walked in the reception area and said, Hey everybody, I hope you don't mind if I cut in line a bit. This seems quite serious. And promptly passed out. He survived. I worked in an ER for a little over two years and as an EMT running 911 calls for another two. I have plenty of stories, but this one's pretty good. So these two 20-ish year old girls come in and they're lovers. Apparently they had been fooling around and one girl stuck a bottle of hand sanitizer in the other's butt. The bottle was about the same size as a shampoo bottle. Well, it got stuck so they came in to have it removed. The doctor was able to pry it out of her butt and he threw the bottle in the trash. The girls were discharged and the girl's nurse, who we'll call Steven and myself, walk in to clean the room for the next patient. Steven says to me, Hey, check this. Reaches into the trash and pulls out the offending bottle of hand sanitizer with his bare hands. He squeezes a huge dollop of the gel in his palms and rubs his hands together, laughing hysterically. That was one of the weirdest. Also, once in medical school, I was doing a clinical at a very small three-bedroom ER in a very rural town, and this giant fat lady lady accidentally burned her left breast off trying to pour a giant pot of boiling pine saw on the floor. First, the whole hand sanitizer thing, I get that you're cleaning it with the hand sanitizer after, but it's just gross. Second, burnt off? A colleague told me this one. Man came in with a major rager that wouldn't go away. Claims he hadn't taken any drugs, but I have no idea if that's true or not. Turns out he woke up with it, then went to work for a full day before coming to emergency to get checked out. I honestly don't know what happened after that. I don't work in ER, but in a hospital. Back in West Virginia, girls used to come in frequently for just a pregnancy test. Not like they sell them in the dollar store or anything. My absolute favorite was a 23-year-old who came in at like 3 a.m. because their sunburn was itchy. There was also a guy who had a baseball-sized festering stinky sore on the top of his head. He had had it for over a year and was just wearing a baseball cap and ignoring it. You could smell him from the hallway. A dude shot some kind of injectable Mexican Viagra into his thing so he could have some fun with his girlfriend. Turns out he basically totaled his junk. Urology told us that it was never going to work again. Best part was he had a wife who he had to explain this to. Finding out that some old dude with a part of his intestine hanging out of his abdomen that drips out poop all the time and who's unable to get a hard on without shoving a needle into his business is somehow married and has a girlfriend while I'm still single as hell was quite a realization. Well, if it makes you feel any better, he's probably not going to have either for long. So my brother works in the ER. A guy came in in the middle of the night with a carrot stuck in his butt. He said he was walking in his garden and fell. Another was a couple who came separately to the ER at night. The girl had a heavily bruised head or something like that, and the guy had a crooked thing. Apparently, while the girl was giving the guy a little bit of fun, she had a seizure, her jaw clenched, and the guy panicked and hit her with something. The situation with the couple sounds awful in so many ways. 
My brother had two varsity football players, rivals from rich triple A's no less, come in with fractured arms, shoulders, and concussions. They actually had to choose between getting them out of their pads and physically restraining them when their screaming alerted one another that they were both in the same ER. Both of them had functioning legs and both were in cleats. There were stitches for staff afterwards. Don't you guys have other stuff to worry about in this moment besides your school rivalry? Come on. My aunt said it was incredibly common for people to come in complaining about terrible stomach pains only to be told that they had a, well, buttload of poop that they just needed to get out. I worked in ER billing, not the ER, but this story actually makes me incredibly angry. I had a less than 10 year old kid's chart with codes for nausea, vomiting, and a broken rib. So I, being Snoopy and having time to waste, opened up the nurse's notes instead of just entering the info. Turns out the kid swallowed his toothpaste after brushing instead of spitting it out. Mom of the year freaked out and gave the kid the Heimlich, to the point of breaking her own son's rib. An honorable mention goes to the lady who came in with her workers' comp insurance info ready to go for a laceration, which is pretty common. But in the section for laceration repair, the nurse had angrily scribbled through dermabond and sutures and whatnot to hand write tiny band-aid in the box. Yeah, this lady went to the ER and wasted a whole bunch of people's time for a paper cut. My godmother was a surgical tech, and the best weird stories all involve things stuck up people's butts. Bottles of Windex, shaving cream cans, tubes for gerbils. Did you know putting live gerbils in your butt was a thing? I didn't know that. The worst part was half of the patients she saw for the I shouldn't have put that in my butt were repeat offenders. Then there was the older patient who called her in because he couldn't find his appendage. Turns out he had a ton of foreskin and couldn't pee. Mom had to glove up and use a tongue depressor to uncover the head of his business so he could pee. The ER is full of crazy stuff like this. While I was sitting in a waiting room, a man comes in, maybe 50 to 60 years old, goes up to the counter and tells the lady, Yeah, uh, I uh, don't know if this is cause for concern or not. But I uh, went to bed on Tuesday night and woke up today. It was Saturday morning. Three days later, he was told to have a seat and I was out of there soon after. But I've always wondered what the story was behind that one. My curiosity has been piqued here too. Like, yeah, I'd be going to the hospital too. Like, please give me an answer to what just happened. A guy came to the ER with an arrow through his head. We thought he was wearing one of those Halloween props, but no, it was real. Watching the neurosurgeons trying to maintain composure when examining the patient was priceless. He went straight to surgery and, from what I understand, did very well. Yeah, I'm sure the surgeons don't have to deal with something quite like this very often. At the time, I was working as a transporter in the radiology department. We shuttle patients in the building to and from tests. I get a page to pick up a patient from our green zone in the ER, non-emergent. I walk into the nursing unit and start looking for the nurse. They see me and get that weird smile on their face. The type of smile in healthcare that makes you worry about what type of patient you're going to be picking up. I walk into the patient's room, introduce myself, and then explain we're off to x-ray. The patient is a very unassuming 20 something year old male, non belligerent, and answers my identification questions very calmly. If anything, he just looks slightly red faced. I ask him if he's able to walk, and he explains that he's having stomach issues and really would prefer not to. No big deal. I have him get his legs on the stretcher they use as beds in the room and wheel him on over to x ray. Get him in the room, close the door, and go to fetch the text to take the images. Now, our x ray staff is full of seasoned techs with 10 plus years of experience on average each. The tech looks at the order and tells me to wait around since it won't be long. All right, no problem. The tech comes back from the exam room, super quiet about six minutes later with a slight smirk. She waves the other techs over to a computer in the back room, away from the patient, chuckles, and pulls the images she just took to be fixed up. Two of the younger female techs bolt away from the computer, hands to mouth, and slam the door. One of the techs whistles, and the older female techs, almost in unison, 
unison go, well, that could cause an abdomen complaint. Very visible in the rectal cavity was a large toy. Long story short, the patient told the tech that he had a new girlfriend and she wanted to try something new. Little do most people realize that it gets to be like a vacuum to get things out of there, and up it went. Five hours later, he was released after it was removed, the old-fashioned way. Ladies and gentlemen, this entire video has been a PSA. Don't stick stuff up your butt. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.